Welcome to the farm. So today, uh, I just wanted to go over some of the things that I'm working on. If you have not been following along on my YouTube shorts, I just got a Creality Sonic pad, so that is what I'm working on uh, at the moment. Um, I've got three printers running on it so far. Uh, the Viper, the Prusa, and the Ender 3 V2. Um, next one up is the King Rune KP3S, a little printer that I absolutely love, so I can't wait to get that and those linear rails working at lightning fast speeds. Um, but yeah, one of the things that I'm doing right now is dialing in this shape here. So after I've done all my calibration, like uh, flow, pressure advance, temperature, speed acceleration, all that fun stuff, um, I then try to do um, a cross section uh, of this cone shape um, because out of all the things that I print, that's the one that usually gives me problems or major deviation from whatever I settled on with the calibration cubes. Um, so uh, one of the things that I look on at for some of the issues that may happen that I'm also trying to check out over on this end um, is uh, if there's any temperature issues, so, such as here's an example here where you can see the sheen is different. Um, and that could be, for a number of reasons, the outer wall is probably too thin compared to the inner wall. And so the inner wall is poking up through previous layers where the outer wall couldn't fully cover it. Um, or, or it's just the temperature could be higher, um, which I already maxed it out to the point where um, I'm getting too much stringing or enough stringing and any more retraction will give me too many zits because uh, I tried that already. Um, another thing that happens is the because it's so steep, the infill can poke through and then you'll see bumps um, and weirdness all along the curve. And then the last thing that you can see very clearly here is the VFA in this case. Um, sometimes ghosting, ghosting would just be with the, where the direction changes. You'd see like a ghost of this line that'll fade away as the printer moves away from it. Um, but this is VFA. It's a... Uh, the pattern you see it all the way around I'm um, there and in the back too um, so yeah those are the issues that I'm trying to work out um, and really that brings me to why I got the sonic pad is because I had been trying to work out this issue on the x1 carbon um, and I was not able to get rid of the ghosting um, at fast speeds fast enough speeds for this material uh, which is atomic uh, carbon fiber PETG uh, because the X1C, my unit, um, the input shaper is not helping get rid of the ghosting um, at those speeds. So you ha either have to go really slow or super fast. Um, at least I can run uh, carbon fiber ASA really nicely on here with uh, super fast 200 millimeter per second speeds. Um, it's not the maximum 520k XL that they advertise, but I wasn't really expecting that. Um, I mean, it's a bummer that I didn't get that, but at the very least, it is a super fast printer still for a lot of the parts in my catalog. Um, but the problem is with this material, though, um, it has to run uh, super slow to get rid of all the issues. And it seems like it might be running a little bit slower than this one here. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, but anyway, let's go over what's going on with these cones. Um, I had previously pried them off the bed. Um, and then I decided to start filming, so I put them back, but I hadn't really looked. But this is the Prusa um, sample, and I do see a little bit of VFA there, so um, I don't know if it's that's what you normally see on the Prusas, but we'll see if I can get that out. I do have a motor uh, upgrade coming along that I'm going to put on there. Uh, the Prorify 3D motors that are supposed to get rid of a lot of the VFA are most of it, so we'll see if that works. Um, but I don't see any other issues with this cone. Um, there's a little bit of temp issues there, um, but that part gets hidden, at least on the other side. It's not, not bad at all. Um, so getting close there, but it might need to be slowed down if the motor swap um, doesn't work. Here I can do motor swaps uh, without voiding the warranty probably, um, although I think there are laws in most places against those sort of tactics. Um, but... Uh, at the very least, it's not uh, open source, uh, so there's not a whole lot that I can do with it to tinker and to find parts or upgrades. Um, but let's see what that print came out looking like. Yeah, so... 
I think a little zit there. And that could be because it is oozing a little bit. Um, I noticed, yeah, there's some stringing still and some oozing. Um, so I may need to bring the temperature back down. I had increased it. Uh, I can no longer bump up the retractions. I think I had mentioned that already because I get zits on the part. Um, if I have, if you do two high retractions on this printer. Um, so I think with this one, I probably got no other choice than to try to match, uh, bring down the inner wall speed a little bit. Um, since the inner wall is also printing faster, that's also part of the sheen change. This material really, really shows it compared to other materials. Uh, so yeah, this part did it. Uh, the X1C did this part at... I'm clicking on the wrong screen to focus. <laughs> Two hours and 19 minutes over here. And then the Prusa, I did believe, did it a little bit quicker in two hours and 13 minutes. Um, though, again, to be fair, the uh, vertical, the VFA is still visible on this. Uh, no VFA or ghosting um, on this. Just the temperature change. So either or, they're probably still going to both slow down at about the same rate if I wanted to get rid of that issue. Um, especially on this one without changing the motor. So I'll probably try that just to test it. Um, and then sometime next week or over the weekend, swap the motors out and then redo the testing all over again here. Um, but anyway, again, that's a Atomic CFP TG. PTG in general, probably not a good choice for the Bamboo X1 Carbon unless you're going to sand and print and paint. Uh, sand and paint, so it doesn't really matter if you get VFA or ghosting. Um, and these two, uh, if you're curious, they go, they're basically a cross section of this item here. And this is a camera body to let you, to let you combine a uh, medium format lenses with this device here, the Lomo Graph Lock Insects Wide Back. Um, so if you're here for 3D printing stuff, uh, just know that I do photography stuff for the most part. But I guess this is a good segue into the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about. The last major update that I had for all of you is that um, I am starting up a Patreon soon to allow for commercial license. I am getting out of the camera assembly business. Um, I really want to dedicate more time to just designing things and doing prototypes and maybe sell one-off prototypes um, and then offer the files for everyone, um, either personal or commercial licenses available. Um, so whoever does get a commercial license, I will be directing people to you to get the fully built units of these. Um, I'll probably still do like a printed parts. I don't think I want to do some, so much stocking of the hardware components anymore either. So I'll probably just have a printed parts service. Um, so that's another thing too, is if you want to lean on me, um, I'll make sure I could do very attractive pricing, um, to make it worth your while. If you just want me to print the parts for you. Um, some of the parts at least, and then you will do the assembly and then sell them on your own. So we'll do lots of options. Um, the good thing about the bamboo printer is the slicer that it comes with, uh, specifically the fork, uh, soft fever fork of it. Um, it's very powerful for building up your project and then, you know, setting up um, optimal settings per print bed or per uh, plate, um, for example. So um, those will probably be included in like an upper tier, um, with all the building materials already in there. So it's very nice and organized. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for that. Uh, the only thing I have left for you guys today is just, uh, let you know that I will probably be posting some videos of, uh, an extruder upgrade. I blew up the OMG extruder that I had picked up with some free Amazon credits. Um, so, or, or not free Amazon credits, but Amazon gift card that I had got. So I decided to just blow it on this. Uh, extruder that I wanted, I had always been wanting to try, but never had the courage to buy. Um, and then the Ender V2, um, I blew up the PTFE tube holder there. Uh, I need a better one that's coming later today, so hopefully I'll get that back up and running. Um, and I've got my point twenty five nozzle on there. Um, that's doing all my detail. Um, and CT, see this atomic. Uh, carbon fiber material does fine inside of the 0.25 nozzle since it is a milled carbon, um, not carbon strands, so you don't have to worry about clogging it. Um, it's been running pretty okay. Um, so I'll probably do some videos on that. And the King Rune KP3S, um, again, excited to get that one up and running. Expect some videos of that soon. Anyway, uh, thanks for following along and watching. 
Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, I hope to do big things with this channel this year. Um, I haven't really dedicated a lot of time to it, but um, as I get out of the camera making business and into more of the making and modeling business, um, hopefully that will change. All right. Talk to y'all later.